for our entrepreneur pitch tonight, we have Jack Morrison. He just relocated here in September to Boulder, and he is the CTO of Replica Labs. Can you guys hear me back there? Barely. Yep, that was that. Right up there. Better? Nope, nope, yep. How's that? Is that, is that? Just talk about it. Uh, I'll just do that, okay? All right, so I'm Jack Morrison. I'm the CTO of Replica Labs. Uh, myself and my coworker Brandon back there are located here in Boulder. Uh, the rest of our team of computer vision scientists and computer vision believers is spread across the world. Uh, and our goal at Replica Labs is to make 3D scanning accessible for everyone. Great. So, we're determined to turn your regular smartphone into a 3D scanner. Uh, we're enabling you to digitally reconstruct the world around you using nothing but the smartphone you already own with no extra hardware. No connects needed, no Intel RealSense, just the smartphone you already have. Since the launch of the iPhone and its App Store nearly a decade ago, uh, apps have come to you know, take over our lives. They control our social connections, they manage our calendar, they buy our coffee, they call us cabs. But until now, our phones have really been limited in how they can learn about the physical world around us. Now we're looking to change that with our first product, Render. Render uh, is an app that will turn your phone into a 3D scanner. Uh, we're first targeting scanning feet, actually, to help people fit shoes and find brand name shoes that fit better, and then rolling out a sort of general purpose 3D scanner. We'll talk about it in a bit. So how it works. First, the user downloads the render application uh, and performs a scan. These scans can take between 30 seconds and a minute, sort of depends how complicated the object is that you're looking at. Next thing we do is the app uh, pops that up into the cloud onto AWS. Uh, we don't require HD videos, so that doesn't take very long. The videos end up being a few megabytes, that's all. And then the interesting part really for me is the you know, tech guy here is the processing. Um, what we do is using state-of-the-art computer vision techniques uh, and some wicked fast NVIDIA GPUs, we turn that 30 to 45 second video into a full 3D model of whatever the scene is that you scan. And we can do that in just about the length of time that the video takes to play. And after we've done that, the user gets their scan. They can use that to 3D print it. They can upload it to uh, Minecraft, for instance. Or they can uh, you know, do more creative things with it, whatever you know, they desire. So, by combining decades of computer vision research with these really, really fast GPUs uh, and the scalable cloud processing that AWS gives us, we're able to turn these 30 seconds videos into really accurate 3D models like the one of my foot here. Um, so they're accurate to within you know, two millimeters of the actual object that you were looking at uh, using just your cell phone, no connects again, no extra hardware. And this is done in the cloud because we can do this regardless of whether you have you know, the newest iPhone 6 or some old droid that you know, has a chip from three years ago because all of the processing is offloaded onto the cloud. So our business focus so far has been on fitting shoes, our first commercial offering render fit. Uh, you know, we're looking at solving the problems that are faced by this industry. Uh, both in e-commerce and in bespoke custom shoe manufacturing. Uh, online shoe stores have return rates well over 30%. And a lot of this, as I'm sure everyone here is aware of, is because fit. Uh, you know, I have a relatively wide foot, but when I'm looking at new shoes, I'm not sure if I need a double E or you know, I have to go all the way up to a quadruple E. And this is the problem that Render Fit is really looking at solving. Uh, we're looking at giving e-commerce the information that they've been lacking. Uh, they haven't been able to get your measurements in your home. Uh, unlike regular shoe stores, we can go in and try the shoes on. Renderfit's secondary focus uh, is on the custom shoe industry. 
Uh, custom shoes are a really high margin business, but so far the manufacturers have been stymied. Uh, you know, they're not able to get to their customers wherever their customers live. Their customers have to come to them, have to visit them in store, uh, have to get their foot scanned with a laser or just hand drawn and measured. Like you see here, this is actually an advertisement for a custom shoe manufacturer. They actually use, you know, just a measuring tape uh, and call that accurate enough. So we can get accuracy that I think far goes above what you can do with a, you know, a measuring tape in your own hands. And we can do that in the customer's home. So a lot of the shoe companies we talk to, they're not really concerned about how expensive these laser scanners are that they use, even though they do cost upwards of $40,000. They're really concerned about the fact that their customers have to come to them to use the laser scanner. So the maker movement is another sort of aspect that's really interesting to us at Replica Labs. Uh, you know, 3D printers themselves used to be the size of a refrigerator. Some industrial ones still are, but they used to only be the size of refrigerators and cost as much as a car. Now they fit on your desk and they cost less than a new computer. Um, so this has really, really revolutionized the maker, you know, the maker movement and helped it grow substantially. So their analog, the 3D scanner, has come you know, way, way down in price. Uh, the 3D system scanner and occipital scanner, if any of you know them here in Boulder, only cost about four or five hundred dollars. And that's great, that's much better than the many thousands of dollars you used to have to pay for one of these. But what we're looking to do with Render is to launch an application where a user can get a scan for a dollar. Uh, and they only pay if they like that scan and they want the result, they want to download it, you know, to print it, to again put it in Minecraft, to do whatever it is they wanted with that scan. Uh, $1 versus, you know, $400 upfront investment. And like I said, so our business model for both of these is uh, sort of a pay per scan basis. So with the Render Maker, the general purpose app, you'd pay if you want to download the scan. It costs us maybe cents uh, to process the scan. Uh, and we turn that into dollars uh, by having customers pay when they download it. For render fit, uh, the model we've gone with is again a paper scan uh, model, but only when the customer actually makes a purchase using that scan. And this is actually a model that uh, one of our pilot partners, Shoe Fitter, who allows you to compare shoes to other shoes, uh, and has proven to be quite profitable. Um, and they, you know, refund the portion of the. Uh, payment if the shoe is returned. Uh, they've even, just by comparing shoes to other shoes, they've seen a 25% decrease in return rates. So we're hoping to partner with them and build on that to help drop these return rates for these e-retailers substantially. Great, okay, so that's all about me. I was told to have some asks of all of you. Um, so, you know, we're a distributed startup. Uh, we've got Two people here in Boulder, one in DC, one in Mexico City, one in Russia, uh, and a couple of interns <coughs> spread about. I was wondering if any of you here have had experience running a distributed team, uh, especially you know, a, a fast moving startup, uh, and have any advice, any you know, pearls of wisdom, things that you've seen help you be successful when your team is spread apart in different time zones. I think it's your second point, it's picking the right people, like finding people who will work with that model that you can trust, that you can engage with. Sure, so up here he said, finding the right people is the biggest help. How do you find the people also? <laughs> and I think the people will find you and always look past where you are, where I think the wedding dress industry, if you can scan the bride, and do the wedding dress perfect. And there's a computer in Taiwan that can has the best lace they can develop and mail it or ship it to you anywhere in the world. I think the ability of scanning is a real big picture. Yeah, that we, we agree, absolutely. <coughs> Saying the, the big picture is much larger than foot yeah. scanning and that's, yeah. that's where we're headed. You know, we, we know that there are applications here in medical imaging, uh, you know, fitting prosthetics, uh, scanning for clothes of all varieties, really the whole apparel industry. But yeah. Yeah. You said that the return rate, and use those words, mm -hmm. but I don't know what that means. Do you mean ROI? 
No, sorry. So the when a customer orders a pair of shoes, there's a one in three chance they'll send that pair of shoes back. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there have been people that said, I think dropping that return rate by 2% would add millions to like Zappos' bottom line, which is pretty substantial. Yeah. When, uh, when you talk about a distributed team, um, what kind of tools are you using to communicate? Uh, I'm on a distributed team as well, and you know we mostly use uh, Google Hangouts. You know that's our way to, to get online, share our screens. Uh, you know, of course, email and, and the basics like that. But if it wasn't for some of the Google tools, um, that would make our job a lot harder. Yeah, we've been using uh, Slack, the new hot, uh, you know, IRC replacement, um, and. Uh, Free camp is sort of a free to do manager to keep our tasks in sync. So it's been going pretty well, uh, given that we're in five different time zones. But, gotcha. Uh, yeah. What do you think your edge is? Is it in terms of having a technology that can uh, do depth perception and processing better than anybody else, or is it something else? Uh, it's mostly that we can do it without. So he asked uh, what our edge is, you know, what our, our value proposition as a company is. And it really comes down to we can do it with the cell phone that customers already have. So there's companies coming out that can do it with uh, Connects. There's a company in Sweden called Volumental that they're, they're looking at uh, fitting shoes. Uh, but you need a Connect or an Intel RealSense to do that. Um, so nobody else can really, or Project Tango is a Google. Google X project um, that's actually embedding this depth sensor in a phone. Um, so we can do the depth perception without special hardware. But what enables that? And why would that disappear next month? Oh, it won't disappear. Uh, really, it's that we're the, fir you know, the, the first mover advantage would be it. Um, that a lot of the research that we build upon to make, uh, to sort of put these models back together, um, is academic research. It's been out there, it's been in development sort of, in research and development for, uh, I don't know, 20 years, parts of it. Uh, but it hasn't really been applied yet. I think you'll be, begin to see a lot more of it being applied. So I was actually in a PhD program. I, was, I moved out here to Boulder in September to be in the PhD program at CU, actually doing robotic vision. Um, and the reason I jumped onto Replica full time is that I think that if I hadn't, well, I'd miss the opportunity. You know, I think in the next three years, you'll see a, a dozen different applications that do something similar to this, either with special hardware or just with this, sort of the same techniques we're using. Um, these are the sorts of techniques that they're using on drones uh, to help them navigate uh, the room. Well, there's a, Dyson has sort of a Roomba replacement that actually does a lot of this. Uh, things like that. Yeah. Is there a, I once heard a thing about 10 or 12 years ago, there was a company in the Bay Area. He had an amazing uh, idea just from 3D printing was coming and they were doing prosthetic devices for uh, all the people that had been maimed in the war and they wanted to be able to take a scanner and a laptop and be able to supply a, a prosthetic device for a reasonable price. Is that, is that still, it seems like a huge need for all of them. I know the, um, excuse me, the military has actually funded a, a couple different small companies to do scanning like that. Most of them, again, are using connects and things like that, these depths, dedicated depth sensors. Um, but they are very interested. I think it's some hundreds of veterans come back amputated uh, every year, uh, and they are very interested in helping them to find well-fitting prosthetics. How does the accuracy of, of those solutions that use additional hardware compared to your pure software solution? Comparable, I think. I mean, we're so we're within two millimeters, uh, so that's between every point on our reconstruction uh, to uh, a 3D printed model that we scanned. Uh, so it's hard to get substantially closer than that, but there may be there, I, I can't really speak to it exactly, but they're close. Um, yeah. You're familiar with structured light scanning. Mm -hmm. So you can get much higher accuracy yeah. with that. Yeah, so there are laser solutions, for instance, that will well, do like microns. Or so. optical solutions yeah. with some sort of projector. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Yeah. 
because it seems like your resolution is not really very good. At all. Yeah, it's gotten better since that one, but it and, is. And you, you, I'm sure you couldn't do a full body. Hmm? You couldn't possibly do a full body. Uh, not if you're moving, but 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 even it, it looks like your calibration pad there. Is, ah, is so pretty, yes, yeah, you caught me. Um, so one of the ways we've sorry, I should have mentioned this actually. Uh, one of the ways we've sort of. Uh, bootstrap this process is throwing down a calibration grid. What we call a calibration grid this series of dots that's right here that my foot is standing on. Uh, and what that lets us do is cut out having to figure out scale for the moment. Um, given time and a little bit of money, we'll be able to solve that. That's not, a, not an insurmountable problem, it's a software development and time problem. So we can do a full body once we get rid of that. Crunch. We just tape it on a wall and have somebody Yeah, uh, we really, <coughs> mostly that gives us the, uh, well, mostly it gives us scale is really what it is. But there are ways with cell phones, they have integrated uh, accelerometers and gyros that you can back the scale out of that. Do you have to, I'm sorry, do you have to move the phone while you're taking the video at a certain way to get a knowledgeable you have to move it. Sorry. Oh, uh, yes. Do you have to move the phone in a certain way? Um, and there are degeneracies um, in the scientific literature goes into it. But uh, this was done just sort of passing it in a circle around my foot. You need uh, enough movement, basically. Oh, there's a question back there. Yeah. Are, are there standards in the shoe industry for geometry of uh, you know shoes uh, that you can just easily say, okay, I'll go to this manufacturer A or B or C, and they all understand the exact same data feed you're going to give them? Uh, in terms of yes, does are there standards between manufacturers? Sorry, do you mean uh, in well, you the know, sizing? Well, the of your process is uh, you know is geometry. Yeah. And you have to input that into a manufacturer. Right. So they have to they have to be able to talk to each other. So a That's lot I mean. a lot of the custom shoe manufacturers actually use the same uh, last generating software. So the last is the it used to be wood mold that they would use to actually tack the you know the fabric onto to build a shoe. Um, and we're in talks with a few different last software last generating software producers themselves. Um, but they mostly take in, so if you take that model that I have there, they have a set, you know, a few sets of measurements that they will accept, that they'll hand enter into that software. We have time for one more question. Yeah. So what about the r shape of foot? So you have the, the thing down, but like for shoes, the r shape of foot is probably the yeah, every shoe manufacturer has given us a different, this is probably one of our biggest pain points actually is with the shoe industry, everyone has given us a different answer on what is most important to them. Um, many of the shoe manufacturers don't actually care about the arch that much. They care about the, um, the circumference of the foot around the ball of the foot, the height, the length, the width. Um, it's the orthotics companies that mostly care about the arch of the foot. Um, and they are all very particular about how they have the scan perform. Some of them want it semi-weighted and they have some like plexiglass thing they put your foot on when they scan it with their laser scanner or structured light sensor. Yeah, but the accuracy in the arch is something we're working on. All right, so let's thank Jack. Thank